Hey guys, Stretch here, and I'm going to demonstrate a Case 1 carrier approach and landing in VR Simulation Superbug for Microsoft Flight Simulator 10. I'm flying Jason 402, an F-18E belonging to Strike Fighter Squadron 147, the Argonauts, out of NAS Lemoore. The USS Nimitz is out here somewhere, steaming into the wind, awaiting my approach. The boat's tachyon channel is 27 X-ray, so let's dial that in. And turn on the tachyon. There's also an ILS on board, transmitting on 110.0, so let's dial that in too. And turn on the ILS receiver. With both nav radios on, we can now enable TACAN and ILS steering modes on the HSI. With the TACAN mode enabled, the aircraft carrier pops up on the moving map, and it's simple to navigate right towards it. In the upper left, you can read the bearing and distance to the boat, and also an ETA. A Case 1 carrier approach is a purely visual approach and thus requires prevailing visual meteorological conditions. In particular, the ceiling must be 3,000 feet or higher and visibility 5 nautical miles or greater. A Case 1 recovery starts with an initial, flown on base recovery course, the direction the boat is steaming. When abeam the carrier, the pilot brakes, slows down, enters the downwind, and then begins a continuous turn to the final bearing. From there, it's 100% focus on a safe landing. The F-A-18E has a maximum carrier landing weight of 44,100 pounds. On the checklist page, up here on the left DDI, you can see that we are below this weight and therefore good to land. I want to preface this by saying I am hardly a CQ naval aviator and any real-life LSO that watches this will surely cringe and award me no grade at best. But should the aspiring virtual nugget do as I say and not as I do, he'll have a good start on his way up the pecking order. With the boat in sight, it's time to set up for the initial. We want to be on base recovery course at 800 feet MSL, no less than 3 miles astern. We'll then fly over the deck while running our approach checklist. Hook down, arming switches off. As you can see, I'm overflying the deck a bit high at 1,000 feet. No doubt the air boss has taken note. Once a beam, we'll enter the brake. The brake is our opportunity to bleed off airspeed as we turn to the downwind. Once our speed drops below 250 knots, we lower the gear and flaps. We adjust the turn rate of our brake to arrive downwind with the carrier 1.1 to 1.3 nautical miles beam. Once established, we descend to 600 feet MSL then perform our landing checklist. Time is short, so run it quickly. Wheels, flaps, hook, anti-skid, straps, dispensers. When we're at the 180, a beam the stern, we begin our turn to final along with the gentle descent. The 180 is the first checkpoint. We should be 600 feet and about 1.5 nautical miles a beam, which we are, more or less. The next checkpoint is the 90, and there we should be 450 feet and 1.2 nautical miles. We're starting to get low and slow, always dangerous, so I'm kicking in the power to recover. The last checkpoint is when crossing the wake. There we should be around 350 feet and approaching the final bearing, on speed and ready to land. The glide slope has come in at this point and we can use it to set up the proper descent rate. At this point we acquire the ball and I usually engage the auto throttle now. It's time now to transition fully into the start. For the final approach, the pilot's attention is split entirely between three parameters, lineup, AOA, and meatball. You should not be looking at anything else. Keep up a good scan. Move your eyes between the three instruments regularly and do not focus on any one of them, even if it's out of parameters and you're correcting it. Guess at a correction and then move to the next instrument. You can check your correction the next time around. Use the throttle to keep the AOA in the yellow. Use pitch to keep the meatball lined up. And use bank to stay aligned with the runway. Remember that the base recovery course and final bearing differ by about 10 degrees. You will need constant corrections to the right to stay aligned. With the auto throttle enabled, the Superbug flies very differently now. You can stop nursing the throttle to manage AOA, though you should still scan the AOA indexer. 
From now on, the only two things you'll be doing is using the TVV to keep the meatball aligned and keeping a solid lineup. It's a very different feel and requires some getting used to. Naval aircraft are not flared. They are flown onto the deck, which can be very disconcerting. Trust in that reinforced landing gear and don't change a thing about your attitude as the deck starts to fill up your canopy. Once we turn on the auto throttle, it maintains the necessary 8.1 degrees AOA. Now we simply fly the TVV onto the deck and keep a steady lineup. The trick is this. Once you've gotten lined up with the ball, put the TVV just forward of the arresting wires. Watch the glide slope and move the TVV up or down from this reference point as necessary to keep the glide slope centered. Once we're in close, resist the urge to flare. Hold everything steady until we're in the wires. It's said that a good pilot is so focused on meatball, lineup, and AOA that it's a surprise when the tires smack the deck. Once you feel a touchdown, move the throttle fully forward in case we bolter. It's a trap. On the upper left, you can see that we caught the third wire. That's the one you want to catch. We want to touch down at an 8.1 AOA with about 750 feet per minute descent. Now that we're sure we caught a wire, we can cut the throttle to idle, raise the hook, and set the nose wheel steering to high. It's time now to follow the guidance of the yellow shirts to our parking spot. Well, you can go ahead and imagine that the deck is bustling with yellow shirts all waving their hands and pointing at each other. Maybe when DCS Hornet comes out someday. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Feel free to tell me in the comments how I would have earned myself an instant field board. Stretch, signing off.